Good morning, everyone. I am Paula White with Desi Food and Nutrition Services. I am the um, Nutrition Program Specialist for the Southeast Central Region. Also in the room with me today is Ellen Reese. She will be handling questions that you may have in the chat, so you can you can ask any questions you'd like uh, during the presentation, or you can just uh, wait and email them to us, or we can um, answer them later in the chat if we need to. Um, so let's begin. Today we're going to be talking about food allergies. Uh, we'll be discussing food allergies versus food intolerance, the big eight, or reading food labels for allergens, avoiding cross-contact, and accommodating children with food allergies. We'll be also learning the difference between cross-contact and cross-contamination. What is a food allergy? Food allergies are the adverse reaction to a food protein, which is the allergen. The body's immune system thinks the food protein is dangerous, then it creates antibodies against the allergen. Um, that's when the person with the food allergy begins to have a reaction. Even a trace can result in an allergic reaction. So it's a good idea to develop plans for preventing an allergic reaction and procedures for responding to food allergy emergencies. Allergic reactions can begin within a few minutes or up to two hours after the food is eaten or come in contact with the person. And at this time, there's no known cure for food allergies. Only strict avoidance is the only way to prevent an allergic reaction. So food allergies affect approximately 5.6 million children under the age of 18. So that's nearly 8%. Um, that is about two kids per every classroom. Food allergies are more prevalent in children, and some do outgrow them as they age. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, reports that the prevalence of food allergies in children increased by 50% between the years of 1997 and 2011. There are several symptoms and signs to an allergic reaction. The student could only have one symptom or they could have several at the same time. The most severe being anaphylaxis. If an individual has an anaphylactic reaction, immediate response is necessary and medical attention is needed. So on this slide, we're seeing um, the different food allergy symptoms. Um, they could be sneezing, um, swelling of the lips, they could have digestive issues, uh, red, itchy eyes. Uh, they could have uh, wheezing or coughing, difficulty breathing. Um, they could even lose consciousness and um, have blue lips or nails. So anaphylactic shock um, is the most severe. Anaphylaxis can lead to death. So it's always important to call 911 and um, administer epinephrine, the EpiPen. The anaphylaxis onset is usually rapid. Uh, the most severe symptoms can restrict breathing and blood circulation, and like I said, may cause death. So we, we want to get those people medical attention as soon as possible. A child may describe their uh, reaction in several different ways. Um, their mouth is hot, their mouth is tingling, their tongue itches, uh, their mouth feels funny, there's something stuck in my throat. You know, just, just a wide variety of um, symptoms or reactions they may have. So what is a food intolerance? Food intolerance is caused by the lack of our body's ability to digest certain substances. It has similar signs and symptoms to food allergies, but they're not life-threatening. Um, 
it's estimated that 20% of the world's population has a food intolerance and diet modification is the only treatment for food intolerance. So it may have some similar symptoms and signs to food allergies, but it's not life-threatening like food allergies are. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the big eight. The big eight includes milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, and soy. The big eight is unexpected food allergens can be found in non-food items as well as food items, but some of the non-food items include like modeling clay and paper mache, crayons, shaving cream, finger paint, soaps, um, cosmetics. Um, there's just a wide variety of things that food allergens can be found in. Food labels or specifications on food items must be checked for allergens. It is the responsibility of the food, school food service to obtain all allergen information by contacting their food supplier, manufacturer, or state agency for if labeling is unclear or inadequate. Um, you should provide the students, parents, and guardians advanced copies of breakfast and lunch menus so they can ask questions and raise any potential concerns they may have about the foods being served. The first one we're gonna talk about is milk. Cow's milk allergy is the most common food allergy among children. Many children will outgrow the allergy before the school age though. Milk from sheep, goats, buffalo, and other mammals can also cause a reaction. Milk should be listed in the ingredients list or as part of the contained statement on the label as seen here on the, on the right. Here's an an example of an ingredients list. We've got milk showing in the main ingredients and then we've got a statement at the bottom contains milk ingredients. So that's that's good. Other words to look for um, include whey and casein. They are also potentially allergenic proteins contained in milk. Milk allergy and lactose intolerance are not the same thing. Lactose intolerance may cause discomfort, but it's not life-threatening. Avoiding milk and milk products is the primary treatment for milk allergies. And children who are allergic to milk are more likely to develop other allergies to other foods such as eggs, soy, peanuts, or even beef. Common foods that may contain milk or milk products would be yogurt, ice cream, cottage cheese, cheese, cream, some baked goods, uh, some processed foods, butter, and creamer. Egg allergies affect about 2% of children. Most children will outgrow the allergy in or before their teenage years. There are as many as 23 proteins in eggs. Most of those proteins are in the egg white and not in the yolk. Egg yolks cannot be safely separated from residual egg white protein allergens, so people who are allergic to eggs should just resist them altogether. And also people who are allergic to chicken eggs may also be allergic to other types of eggs, such as goose, duck, turkey, or quail. Some common foods that may contain eggs or egg products would be canned soups, salad dressings, ice cream, meat-based dishes, some commercial egg substitutes, custard, frosting, mayonnaise. And again, this is not an exhaustive list, it's just some examples. Fish allergies are more common in adults as compared to children. Respiratory and systemic reactions have been reported to exposure to finned fish protein that can become airborne in steam. A fish allergy is not the same as a seafood allergy, and the most common types of fish that cause these allergies would be salmon, tuna, and halibut. The shellfish protein is different from the finned fish protein. 
sometimes people can eat fin fish if they are allergic to the shellfish though. Allergy to shellfish can develop at any age and is usually lifelong and not commonly outgrown. So care should be taken to avoid cross-contamination. The tree nut allergy affects roughly 0.5% to 1% of the U.S. population. Peanuts are not tree nuts and they are legumes. So being allergic to peanuts increases the risk of being allergic to tree nuts. In the United States, food manufacturers are required to list if their food may contain an allergen. So always read the ingredients list to be sure that the food is allergen free. Some common items that may contain tree nuts would include foods not regulated by the FDA, cosmetics, personal care items, prescription and over-the-counter medications, toys, crafts, and pet foods. Peanuts are one of the most common pediatric allergies. Most peanut allergies tend to be lifelong, and it doesn't take much of the peanut to trigger an allergic reaction. Um, one 250th part of a peanut would be all of the all it would take so that would be like cutting a peanut in half 125 times which would probably be just like a speck uh, like a speck of dust or something um, the reactions may occur within minutes or hours after being in contact with the allergen wheat is another food that people are allergic to the wheat allergy may can be confused with gluten intolerance or celiac disease. Gluten is a protein found in grains such as wheat, barley, and rye. And celiac disease is an autoimmune disease of the gut and is a separate and distinct condition from the wheat allergy. Wheat allergy is usually outgrown in childhood though. Some common items that may contain wheat would include cosmetics, hair care products, medication, vitamins, and pet food. Soy is another one of the big eight. Typically, allergic reactions first appear in infants and young children under the age of three. Many will outgrow the allergy during their childhood. Soy allergy reactions rarely cause anaphylaxis and soybeans are not generally a major food in the United States, but some variations of the soybean have become very popular, such as edamame. Soy can be found in processed foods as well as many meat and vegetarian entrees. Some places you may find soy would be infant formulas, pet foods, processed meats, soaps, and moisturizers. Most anything with the prefix soy, artificial and natural flavorings, vegetable broths, gums, and starches. Now we're going to switch and we're going to talk about food labels. So in 2004, Congress passed the Food Allergen Labeling and Consumer Protection Act. This FAL CPA law identified eight foods as the major food allergens, which is the big eight, the milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, soy, and wheat. The law requires that food labels identify the food source of all major food allergens used to make that particular food. On April 23rd of this year, the Food Allergy Safety Treatment Education and Research Act was signed into law, naming sesame as the ninth major food allergen recognized by the U.S. So this change will be effective January 1 of 2023. So be on the lookout and be cautious for um, sesame as well. Okay, here's an example of a food label showing some food allergens. The ingredients list peanuts, whey, which is a milk protein, 
It shows tree nuts, which is the almonds. It shows milk, soy lecithin, whey powder again. And then down at the bottom, it also says that this product contains peanuts, soy, nuts, and milk. So here would be an example of an ideal food label. All of the allergenic foods would be in bold, so they would stand out for you, so you wouldn't have to search for them so, so much. And then it would also list every food allergy um, in the contained statement at the bottom. And this also lists sesame. So some other wording to be cautious of on a food label would be looking for um, where the food was made or manufactured. Um, this food label says that the equipment, that the food was made on equipment that also processes soybeans and it was processed in a peanut and tree nut free facility. So that, that would be good to know as well. Okay, so reading food labels is very important to do every time because formulations can change without notice and ingredients can differ among suppliers, brands, and even between the different sizes of the same product, say a food service size versus a grocery store size. So you want to make sure you read the ingredients all the time. Don't rely just on your safe list because again, those can change. And if the food label doesn't provide the sufficient information, it's the LEA's responsibility to contact the supplier or manufacturer or check with the state agency. The CDC recommends keeping food labels for 24 hours. Um, that is in case someone has an allergic reaction um, that will usually happen within a couple minutes to a couple hours after the product is consumed. For leftovers and food reused in another recipe, keep the food label until all the product is consumed or disposed of. And to maintain a food library, either keep the actual label or scan or uh, photograph the label. Accommodating students with food allergies. Have policies and procedures in place. Plan and serve modified meals to students. There's a possibility of purchasing different foods for those students with allergies. Uh, the food service staff, teachers, administrators, and aides need to be trained and to be prepared for students with allergies, the LEA must be vigilant in policies and procedures, have coordination between the staff, parents, and physicians. Okay, the, the term, it takes a village. It does take a village in preparing to take care of children with food allergies. Some of the key players include the administrators, teachers, food service staff, and school nurse. It also takes um, the janitors, the bus drivers, classroom aides, and even other students. Okay, the administrator's role. Um, the administrators should coordinate the planning of school food policies and procedures. They should provide professional development and training of food allergies to all staff. Um, ensure the school district food allergy policies and procedures are being implemented by all staff and communicate the school's responsibilities and expectations and practices for managing food allergies to all parents. The school food service professionals role is to assist the LEA in planning for managing food allergies, attend food allergies training, communicate appropriate actions to all food service staff on how to avoid allergic reactions, help prevent food allergy reactions in the cafeteria, understand how to effectively read food labels to identify allergens in foods and beverages served in school meals and snacks, 
prevent cross-contamination of potential food allergens during food preparation and serving on serving utensils and equipment. The teacher's role is to know the school district's food allergy policies and practices, participate in school-based training to help recognize the signs and symptoms of food allergies and how to respond, prepare and respond to food allergy emergencies, and work with parents, school nurse, and other appropriate school personnel to determine if classroom modifications are needed. Medical statements. The SFA must obtain a written medical statement from a state licensed healthcare professional to receive reimbursement for a meal modification if the modified meal does not meet the National School Lunch Program requirements. So the medical statement must include information about the child's impairment, a brief explanation of how exposure to the food affects the child, how to accommodate the child, and foods to be omitted with recommended alternatives if that's appropriate. Um, a copy of this medical statement can be found on the Modesi Food Nutrition Services website. Here is a link to that at the bottom of the slide. The medical statement um, for schools are required to give notice and information to parents and guardians regarding how to request a reasonable modification in the parents' or guardians' procedural rights. The SFAs should not deny or delay a requested modification because the medical statement does not provide the recommended alternatives. The SFAs should be diligent in working with parents and guardians to obtain supplemental medical statements. SFAs may receive reimbursement for a meal modification request without a medical statement when the accommodation can be made within the program meal pattern. Say, for example, if a student has a common allergy to one fruit or vegetable, the school food service can simply substitute with another fruit or vegetable. Um, if you're having pineapples one day and the child is allergic to pineapples, and maybe could have peaches. So use flexibilities whenever possible. Just make a note of the actions taken to accommodate the students. So this will help to safeguard students in all areas of their school environment. SFAs may or must obtain a written medical statement from a state licensed healthcare professional in order to receive reimbursement for meal modifications when the modified meal does not meet the meal pattern requirements. So schools are not required to obtain updated medical statements on a regular basis. So you do not have to have a new medical statement every school year. Um, you also are not required to, re, to obtain written documentation from a state licensed healthcare professional rescinding the original medical order prior to ending the meal modification. But it's recommended that the LEAs maintain documentation when ending the meal accommodation. So the definition of a disability is under the Americans with Disabilities Act, the ADA, Anything that substantially limits a major life activity constitutes a disability. This includes conditions that impair immune, digestive, neurological, and bowel functions, as well as many others. So the major life activities would include seeing, hearing, walking, speaking, learning, reading, eating, and breathing and the major bodily functions would include the digestion, um, immune, respiratory, circulatory, and neurological. Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act um, 
prohibits discrimination against qualified persons with disabilities in programs and activities that receive federal financial assistance. Um, students with life-threatening food allergies are generally considered eligible for protection under the Section 504. Bullying children with food allergies is common and it's also associated with a lower qual quality of life for the child being bullied. Reasons for bullying can range from the child appearing different to the lack of food allergy education and awareness among students and staff. Bullying can result in emotional distress for both the child and the parent, as well as physical harm to bullying the victim. So that, that should never happen. Cross-contact versus cross-contamination. So cross-contact um, is the allergen is transferred to a food or surface that does not contain the allergen. So that would be like a cutting board or a knife, something used to prepare the food. Cooking does not reduce or eliminate the allergen. Cross-contamination is microorganisms from a different source contaminate other foods. So microorganisms would be like a bacteria from um, a food that would contaminate other foods. And cooking does reduce or eliminate those microorganisms. <clears throat> um, some potential sources for cross contact would be food handling and preparation, insufficient hand washing, insufficient cleaning, shared equipment and utensils or cutting boards or counters, splatter or steam from cooking, salad bars, buffets, and serving stations. So cleaning with soap, warm water, and friction will remove the allergen residue. Sanitizing will reduce the microorganisms, but will not remove the allergen residue. So it's always good to clean first and then you can sanitize. Um, ways to prevent cross contact would be uh, color code your utensils, equipment, um, that sort of thing. Isolate ingredients containing allergens. Um, individually prep menu items without allergens, um, possibly first. Uh, sticker or color code wrapped foods and follow your SOPs for hand washing, cleaning, and sanitizing. I've included a link to a YouTube video um, on ways to prevent cross contact at the bottom of the slide. Um, it's just something good to, to watch. It's just a couple minutes. Um, and here are some links to some food allergy information. You can look at those if you would like. Uh, there's information on food allergy on the on the Desi Food Nutrition Services website. Yeah, any anytime you need a little additional information, you can go to these or any other um, food allergy websites. And I thank you so much for attending. <laughs>